important. I want to maximize my valleys. And I, I want to ask you how, how do you, how do you do in your valleys? How, how intentional are you at asking yourself questions, at being self-aware of what's going on, at maximizing your valleys, at learning from your valleys and your funks? How long do your valleys last? How intense are your valleys? How frequent are your valleys? What can you do to improve learning in your valleys, learning from your valleys? What are some thoughts? What are some questions? What are some better questions that you can ask yourself in a valley? What, what, what systems can you create in your valley to make those valleys more productive, more effective, making them a learning tool, not just something to get through or in my past avoid entirely, <laughs> which is not, is not healthy at all to do. What is going on, EQ gangsters? So I'm gonna apologize in advance for the audio. I'm not set up for those of y'all that are listening on the podcast. I am on the road and I wanted to capture, I'm on my way to jujitsu. Thankfully, finally getting back in the mix with my jujitsu. Last week was my first week back after a month of not going to jujitsu. So I wanted to capture another lesson that from from my most recent podcast episode, the solo episode, not the interview. And I've talked about it before, but it just kind of hit me again. How much of an aversion I have to being in a valley or a funk. And it's it's almost like a like a man, like a you know, sometimes our, you know, we've got our dog, Ted, is not a big fan of taking baths. And so when we stick him in the bathtub, you know, got to clean him off. He's immediately trying to get out of that bathtub as soon as his feet hit that, hit that water. So same thing, you know, I talked about when I, when I did that great interview with Jeff Gibbard, who wrote the book, Lo uh, Lovable Leadership phenomenal interview and then right after that interview I got slammed with all kinds of emotions pleasant and unpleasant and and so and it just made me again just after you know kind of still thinking about it and stuff just how much I still have an aversion how, how much I don't want to I, I don't like unpleasant emotions I don't like to feel unpleasant emotions and so you know I but I, I want to get better at being comfortable with uncomfortable emotions, just like I do in jujitsu, where I, I've spent the last four and a half years of the five years in jujitsu on my back because I'm the biggest, well, nine times out of 10, I'm the biggest guy that I'm rolling with. And so. I, I don't like to create an unfair advantage for me because I'm bigger than folks. So even with higher belts, a lot of times I will even start on my back just to give them that advantage, that, that the advantage so that I don't, anyway, my side, the side, you know, to compensate for my size. And so I, I'm comfortable being in uncomfortable positions at jujitsu for four and a half years. I have been, I've, I let them start in side control, I let them start in mount, I let them start wherever they want to start, north, south, doesn't matter, all, you know, I know non-jujitsu people, just trust me, <laughs> those are all dominant positions, so I'm used to starting in weak positions, and, and now I am comfortable in those positions, for the most part, I just had an exception last night, actually, funny story, I had a 
went against this guy. He's a real good buddy of mine who's a special forces secret squirrel guy. He's 6'1", 6'2", 270 pounds <laughs> and 11 years younger than me. And he's like, hey man, you know, we were doing some kind of some training stuff. He's like, hey, can, can, you know, do you mind if we roll? And I'm like, dude, hundred percent, let's do it. And so we rolled, you know, he, he, I mean, he's rolled lots of times, but he doesn't roll consistently. And wow, we have the exact same game, which is the pressure game. And which is knowing how to use your body weight tactically and it was it was brutal <laughs> it was brutal man i'm like man so this is what it's like rolling with me it, it was i he was he he tapped me twice actually and and i you know four and a half years on my back i pride myself on my defensive game and man he he took it to me he knew how to use those 270 pounds normally i can find I'm super sensitive now to when people are off balance and I can get a, you know, I, or, or space, I can sense space and balance and timing. And man, I, I, he, he, <laughs> he took it to me. And now we rolled, we probably rolled for 15 minutes straight and he tapped me twice in those 15 minutes. So I, you know, I survived a lot, but he got me good, man. It was, it was, it was intense. <laughs> Cause again, I'm not used to having a bigger guy who knows how to use their body weight on top of me, you know, uh, you know, it was it was great. Anyway, so for the most part, I am comfortable in uncomfortable positions, and so I want to get there with my emotions. I want to be comfortable feeling uncomfortable and unpleasant emotions, but I, in full, <clears throat> you know, transparency. I, I am not there yet, man. I and again today was a great example of that. I just, I, I was like my big giant bonehead golden doodle, who as soon as my foot hit that water, I was trying to get out of that funk as quickly as possible, rather than developing a mental, emotional, intellectual muscle memory of of saying, okay, why am I here? What can I learn? in this valley, where are these emotions coming from? What was the stimulus that led to these emotions? What could I have done differently to not experience the degree or intensity of these emotions? But I I, I didn't, I, I mean, I, I did the kind of the first levels, okay, what am I feeling? Which for me is tremendous growth and progress from four years ago where I just would have gone into a funk and it probably would have been in a funk for a week at least, maybe longer. And in that funk, I would have been the Incredible Hulk and potentially caused emotional injury and harm to my wife and daughter because I was feeling these things that I wasn't even aware of, acting out, reacting, not knowing why I was acting like an emotional five-year-old. So thankful, thankfully, I'm, I'm, I'm further than that. But this emotional work, y'all, I don't know. Again, we're all different. It, you know, I, I just, you know, and I'm thankful for the growth that I've had. I just, I, I just have a lot more, <laughs> have a lot more growth that I've got to do, so that I, I, I can learn. More. I want, I want to. I want to, I guess what I'm saying is I want to maximize my valleys. I want to maximize my valleys. And I, I want to ask you, how, how do you, how do you do in your valleys? How, how intentional are you at asking yourself questions at being self-aware of what's going on at maximizing your valleys at learning from your valleys and your funks? How long do your valleys last? How intense are your valleys? How frequent are your valleys? What can you do to improve learning in your valleys, learning from your valleys? What are some thoughts? What are some questions? What are some better questions that you can ask yourself in a valley? 
what 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 systems can you create in your valley to make those valleys more productive, more effective, making them a learning tool, not just something to get through or in my past avoid entirely, <laughs> which is not is not healthy at all to do. Because again, all those little valleys with those with those do with those causes emotional knots and then those emotional knots will at some point as I've talked about many times in our previous in my previous podcast they will turn into emotional Charlie horses so because a guy I was talking to today Jeff Gibbard again in, in my interview this morning he he's got these five meta lessons of of learn of uh of superheroes or something like that. I don't remember exactly the verbiage he uses, but his first one was was learning. And, and then he kind of talked about it, learning how to learn. And so for me, I want to maximize my ability to learn from my valleys so that it's not just a, you know, potentially an emotionally unpleasant experience because I'm, I'm feeling unpleasant emotions or uncomfortable emotions, but they become it becomes a productive experience and I, and and I don't I don't want to run from these these uncomfortable unpleasant emotions I want to lean into them and again make them make them my professors make them my my coaches make them my tutors and so I'd love to hear from you all and I also want to just tell you all thank you Again, so much. If you wouldn't mind taking, again, 15 seconds, 20 seconds to just rate and review the, the podcast on whatever platform you're on, it would really mean a lot to me. And one of the things that I want, my wife actually, I guess, started doing, she started doing this. And I'm like, man, that's a great idea. I need to start doing this. For her podcast, which is filter it through a brain cell.com, it's her website, filter it through a brain cell. She teaches parents, leaders, teenagers, how to think logically and how to, how to identify and spot logical fallacies and illogical thinking. And she's been reading different reviews that she gets on her podcast. And I thought, man, that's a great idea. So that's something I'm going to probably start implementing as well. So anyway, again, because that means a lot. You know, if you're getting value from the podcast, that would really mean a lot if you would mind taking 20, 15, 20 seconds to just rate, review, subscribe, share an episode that's really been impactful for you and just sharing a lesson maybe as well. That would be awesome. And 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 I'd love to hear specifically, you know, again, we're, I'm on all the social media channels at The Noble Gibbons, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and again, that's N-O-B-L-E-G-I-B-B-E-N-S. And I'd love to hear maybe what your processes are and your questions when you're in a, in a, in a valley or a funk. How, how, how good are you in your valleys? How, you know what I mean? Like, anyway, because um, it's part of life. Rather than me trying to, I've, I've tried to avoid them for my, most of my life. Now I want to try and learn from them. You know, so anyway, that's that's kind of the the whole point and purpose of this particular episode. I'd love to hear from you all on your thoughts on those, on, on valleys, how you do in valleys and healthy, emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Emotionally healthy leaders create emotionally healthy cultures which create and optimize and maximize results and outcomes for, for your organizations. So, and for those of you all, man, thank you too, for those of you all that either have companies, know of companies that could utilize my emotional intelligent leadership coaching services. Thank you for those of you all that have reached out, turned me on to either your company or other people's companies and stuff. Cannot thank you enough. It has meant so much. I've got a couple really big, projects and companies that are in in the in the wings right now that could really turn into some really big things and to to be a part of of helping leaders become healthier emotionally so that they can 
be a part of not only changing their families, but also changing their cultures of their organizations to have healthier cultures, you know, emotionally healthy, emotionally positive cultures, just, just, it means a, a tremendous amount. So thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey and for you all being a part of my journey.